<laughs> hey, what's up? It's Social Media Communications, and uh, I just wanted to do this quick video here. It might last a little bit longer than I expected to, but however long it takes is however long it takes. Anyway, um, I recently got this awesome find that I picked up off of eBay. Not a bait, I bought it. And I uh, picked it up, I bought it, and I got it in the mail today. And this, and what it is, is of course you already know because of the title. It's not really that heavy. It, it, I'm just playing, no, it really is that heavy. <sighs> Star Wars Trilogy, the definitive collection. Widescreen collector's edition laser disc bot set from 1993. Now, you're wondering, like, why the hell did you buy that? First off, you cannot deny how fucking awesome that is. Two, because of George Lukey. George Lukey, Lukey Lucas, Low Cash. I call him George Low Cash. I'm straight out of Low Cash. I'm gonna suckle you into spending all this money on all these different editions of these Star Wars movies because you're stupid. Straight out of Low Cash. Straight out of Low Cash. You know, George straight out of Low Cash, Lucas. Because I think that he must be thinking he has some major money issues if he keeps just, you know, shoving this shit down people's throats. Of the Blu-ray, Star Wars Blu-ray with new scenes that are just make the movies laughable. Like, no, chocolate 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 chocolate. So, no, 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 stupid shit. So we don't need that crap. First off. The original DVDs are okay. The originals, the originals that everybody grew up with, uh, the original format, you know, the ones that release in theaters and absolutely just spark, you know, it just absolutely blew people away back in, the, you know, 1977, the original version of Star Wars, you know, 1980, Empire Strikes Back, the original version of Return of the Jedi, all those movies, you know, they, they're just a big part of people's childhood, childhoods. And, and three of the most successful movies ever made. And for some reason, George, George Lugie, after, you know, the big success of those movies, which kick-started his fucking career, I'm sorry, American Graffiti is a good movie. But it wasn't, like, the biggest hit ever, like, Star Wars at that time. I'm sorry. I mean, THX 1138? That shit sucks. Boring-ass shit with some fucking uh, robots that look like T-1000s from, from, you know, T2... But like 20 years earlier with low budget effects, and it's just, I don't care for THX 1138. So, he did that. That's his first student film. So, you know, hey, okay, but still. American Graffiti, then he did Star Wars. It was a huge hit. You know, part of me thinks that maybe George Lucas isn't really showing a lot of respect for the originals because he never expected the original to be a hit in the first place. Another part of me is just, he just wants to stick it to the fans because he wants people to love this he wants people to be like oh oh my god the special editions are just so great i mean the see with job with the hut and han solo and that unbelievably awesome cgi is the best thing i've ever seen and and greedo shot first and and just and and and, and, and fuck that no okay so seriously that's the reason why i bought this set because George Luki could care less about the originals. And I'm like, why are you making such a big deal about it? Because they're the originals. It's the fucking movies that built his fucking legacy. And he's not released them on DVD or Blu-ray in a good format. The DVDs? That's a fucking insult. Oh, the limited editions. We're not, I'm not going to release them in a box set. I'll release them separately. And, you know, you're going to get the special edition anyway. Even though you don't want it, it doesn't matter, you're going to get it. And the originals are a bonus disc. A fucking bonus disc. That's just, that's the equivalent of getting bitch slapping Luke's, you know, Mark Hamill in the face. Or, or Harrison Ford. Or people who are involved with making the originals. But they're probably too busy, you know, the special effects artists, the guys and producers originals are probably too busy to suck into George Lucas' dick to even give a fuck. So, you know, you have, I mean... Erwin Kirschner, he's probably spinning in his grave that his original version of Empire Strikes Back has still never been released in a good format. 
Even the DVD is bullshit. It's, the format's all jacked, and you have to fuck with your TV to make it look right. And it only looks just as good as this. VHS quality. It looks as good as this. It's pathetic. I mean, I don't understand it. Put some goddamn work into your fucking original trilogy. And fuck the prequels. And fuck the stupid special editions with their stupid CGI bullshit. And just, that's why I did, why, why I spent my hard earned money for my paycheck, first paycheck in a while, on this. Because I think it's well worth it. So anyway, now, now I'm off my little George Lucas rant. And, you know, you guys understand now why I spent the money on it. I'm going to show it to you. So, first off, you know, you got this heavy-ass fucking thing. This box, which is really well done. You see the TIE Fighter there. You see, it, it's got... It's got... No, oh, I'm doing it. It's got Star Wars there. I know, 20th Century Fuckface released it, but... See? That. And, uh, you open it up. You see, you open it up like this, there's a Velcro, so you open it up like that. And this is what it looks like, opened up. So, okay. This is literally one of the best box sets I've ever seen in my life, because I've never seen a box set that does this, okay? And now, you not only get the movies, okay? You not only just get the movies here, okay? You also get... This is obviously when George Lucas was still cool and knew what the fuck he was doing and wasn't didn't lost hadn't lost his mind yet in 1993. You get this book. Typewriter on it, okay? George Lucas the Creative Impulse. You get a fucking book. How fucking awesome is that? And it's not just any normal, you know, half ass I'm just gonna put it together real quickly type book for the set. No, it isn't. It's, you know, well made. I mean, you got awesome stuff like that. I mean, shit. I mean, fuck. I mean, it covers his movies, all his stuff up until 93. You know, Indiana just got a lot of nice, cool, cool behind the scenes photos. You know, of all types of movies. Like Willow. You get a badass full color photo of General Kyle. General Kyle. Kyle or whatever, kicks ass. You know, he even gives Howard the Duck, you know. If this book even gives Howard the Duck some good treatment. Look, look. look there, there's Filzy! Dark Overlord. And fun photos here of, of Beverly, you know, Beverly and, and Howard. I mean, it's cool. I can't right? talk about Labyrinth, the effects work he did for that. <laughs> this photo, <laughs> I think it's cool. So it's, you know, Howie with his, his guitar. So this is, I mean, I mean, this is like, this isn't a half ass book. I mean, he could just be half ass of this shit. I, I, I've never seen this book before. I think it only comes with the box set. I don't know if it was released separately or not. But that's some fucking awesome shit. The Return of the Jedi, you got the Empire Strikes Back, you got this nice full color photographs here, and the scene stuff. I mean, shit. On the eyes, you got Raiders of the Lost Ark, showing the melting face of Taut. I. Okay. I mean, this, this, this whole thing, this book, it's like, uh,. That's what Tucker ran his dream. You know. Even talks briefly talks about that show Maniac Mansion that Skywalker you know that Lucas did. Talks about the Skywalker Ranch. It talks about Lucasfilm, Lucas Arts. Get this little photo tomb which showing all the freaking Star Wars merchandise. Lucas Arts and this kind of cool stuff. I think this is showing a real awesome photo of Willow behind the scenes of the fairies. 
how um, they did that. And then just this book is like two hundred pages long. You get two hundred page long hardcover book with the set. That's that's fucking cool, really. So you get that, but and it's really well done. The set is made really well. The set is really made really good. They took their time with it. There's even like styrofoam on there to keep things nice and snug. How's this? Which is a little booklet thing that basically shows you what kind of... And I just want to read this because this, in a way it's sort of sad. But it, it doesn't need to be talked about. THX Laserdisc Program presents the Star Wars Trilogy. What you're about to experience is a very special edition of the Star Wars Trilogy produced under the supervision of the THX Laserdisc Program. The THX Laserdisc program was developed to ensure optimum audio and video performance of feature films on Laserdisc by monitoring every stage of their production. This presented special challenges in the case of the Star Wars trilogy. First, the best possible film elements were located and utilized to create an all-new video transfer. Before the beginning of the trilogy's film to tape transfer, THX technical personnel calibrated all of the equipment including the telescene and video monitors. During the transfer process, the THX Laserdisc program pioneered the use of a new technology to remove the effects of dirt and pinholes seen as white flashes from the film elements. So this is remastered on like the bullshit that's on the fucking DVD, the bonus discs. The result is a clean, consistent picture which is the closest possible to the original theatrical presentation. Color and contrast were also controlled by respected telescene colorist Lou Levinson. Then as a result, end result is razor sharp transfer of each Star Wars film, something laser files have been anticipating for a long time. In addition to improving the picture, THX personnel supervised a meticulous remastering of Trilogy's soundtrack in the post-production facilities located at Skywalker Ranch. Original sound stems were used to produce the new digital soundtracks, maximizing the full dynamic potential of the Laserdisc medium. The new soundtracks boast a mark marked improvement in clarity and range, with deep, smooth bass and increased presence of surround sound. The remastering for all three films was supervised by two of the original creators of Star Wars Sound, Ben Burt and Gary Summers. From your initial experience of the attack of the Star Wars story and Star Wars, it'll be clear that the new THX version represents the ultimate expression of Star Wars trilogy on any home video format. Which, sad as this was 93, and almost it probably still is the best in any home video format. And we have Blu-rays! And DVDs. Oh crap! So this actually has an audio commentary on all of all of the all of the films. Um, there's audio commentaries, you know, little brief audio commentaries you can access with the Laserdisc on your analog on the analog track. Your George Lucas talking, Darren Smurin, Ben Burt, Ken Ralston, Ralph McQuarrie, Frank Frank Oz. So in Star Wars. So basically, the Star Wars Laserdisc supplement is highlighted by an interview with the creator director George Lucas, focusing on the evolution of the Star Wars storyline and characters. So you have that cool. It also has uh, George Lucas. This someone is highlighted by an interviewer interview with creator director George Lucas, focusing on the evolution of the Star Wars storyline and characters. Additionally, some of his comments, as well as those of several principles involved in creation and production effects can be heard of alternative analog audio tracks. Production illustrator Ralph McQuarrie, who is responsible for much of the look of the films, offers an insightful narrative in the origins of Star Wars, highlighted by a slideshow presentation of his production art. A very special look at Lucasfilm's archives at Skywalker Ranch, the prop and model residence for all Star Wars films is hosted by archivist Tom Dice and his capable assistant R2-D2. Original theatrical trailers and a wealth of rare behind-the-scenes still photographs complement the supplemental treatment. So now, the original not only has a little bit of com audio commentaries, it also has features. Cool. So you have Ken Ralston uh, talks about, in the, when you have Princess Leia's feudal flight sequence, Ken Ralston talks about the origin of Star Wars and motion control camera work and his original ship designs. And then you have a number nine when you know, they're lost in the desert, C3 people and R2D2. Ralph McQuarrie talks about his artistic concepts for Tatooine, his design concept for C3PO and, and, and R2D2. And then you have track 15, you have R2D2 secret message, you know, the layout chronograph. Ken Ralston talks about creating that holograph. Then you have 
of course you have all the different sides because laser disc you have sides one, two, and whatever. But you have on track nineteen you have Attack of the Sand People, Ken Ralston talks about shooting the Rave Land Speeder and Tuscan Raider scenes in the desert. You have George Lucas on track twenty three when they do this stra the strategy meeting of Death Star of the Death Star. George Lucas talks about creating the sounds of Darth Vader with Ben Burt. And then twenty five George Lucas, you know, Vader interrogates Princess Leia that sequence. George Lucas talks about the choice of James Earl Jones of the voice of Darth Vader. And in and, and track 29, you have Ben hires Han, Chewie, and the Millennium Falcon, and Ram off McCory. Talks about Chewbacca design considerations. And in track 34, the Imperial Cruiser's death in the Millennium Falcon sequence, Ken Ralston talks about the illusion of hyperspace. How they did the hyperspace stuff. Then you have side 3, you have uh, and the Millennium Falcon when it's captured. Ralph McCory talks about the production design for the Death Star. And Dennis Mirren also talks about the plexiglass and Matt shots for the Death Star. And then in, uh, you know, in side four, last, you know, still a bunch of sides on the, on the original. So, yeah. So, you have, uh, so, you have set the last side of side four, actually side four is the second to last side. You have, on track 19, you have Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan meets Darth Vader. George Lucas talks about the mythology in Star Wars. And then in track number 21, Dennis Murin, George Lucas talks about George Lucas' direction for space dogfights. And then in, in track 24, Arrival, the, the Avon Moon Rebel Base sequence, Ken Ralston talks about match shots and the Death Star. And then in side 5, you get to the last part, pretty much last half of the film. And in track number 2, when the Rebel fighters begin their attack, Dennis Murin talks about constructing the Armada sequence in the Rebel attack. Ken Ralston talks about Depicting spacecraft speed and effects shots. Um, in track three, enter the TIE fighters when the TIE fighters show up. Ken Ralston talks about the trench run and the TIE fighter explosions, how they were done. In track seven, Ken Ralston talks about Lucas's concepts and templates for the Death Star aerial battle. Um, in tra track seven is Red Leader's foray when, when Red Leader, his foray doesn't work. They have track 15, the end of the Death Star. Ken Ralston talks about how the explosion of the Death Star. And track 17, when you have the whole thing where the heroes are welcome. Dennis Mirren talks about original crew reaction to Star Wars. The supplement continues with start, material start in side five, and they start with theatrical trailers. And then side six has got a lot more supplemental materials. You have war stories, an interview with George Lucas, original concept for Star Wars, writing Star Wars, aerial dogfights in Star Wars, C-3PO and Darth Vader, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, the Star Wars Gallery, noted, narrated by Ralph McQuarrie, Droids, the Tatooine Desert, Moss Eisley Spaceport, Chewbacca, the Death Star, the Millennium Falcon, Inside the Cantina. These are all still photographs. All, all of this stuff. 29 through 36 is all still photographs. But they're behind the scenes stuff. Inside the Cantina, the reward ceremony, Spacecraft, 30, track 38, the Death Star, they're all still photographed for special effects. 39, the chess game, behind the music, Star Wars, Star Wars still photographs, number 40. And 41 is a tour of the Lucasfilm archives, and that's by archivist Don Bice and R2D2. Wow. That's, that's just amazing. So, I mean, so you get, now you get to Empire Strikes Back. You get side one of the movie, you get tracked. Track two, when you had the main titles, Dennis Murin talks about the concepts for the Empire storyline and audio commentary. Then you have track four, Dennis Murin talks about, you know, about when Luke's on reconnaissance on the Tauntaun. Dennis Murin talks about creating the Tauntaun effects. Then you have track number thirteen, when Rogue Two's frosted fine when they find the little robot probe droid. Ken Ralston talks about map problems with Hoth's, Hoth's white snow. You have side two. You have a bunch of commentary little snippets here in 19 the imperial walker attack ken ralston talks about the challenge of empire and evolution of the walkers dennis Mirren talks about the walkers as a stop motion effect the considerations considerations of walker movement ken ralston talks about filming the snow speeders and walkers in the surface attack 26 ken ralston track 26 is when luke leaves for dagobah ken ralston talks about r2d2 sometimes changes color um, track 28 in the asteroid field. Ken Ralston talks about creating the asteroid field. Just add potatoes. <laughs> then you have uh, track number 31. Ken Ralston talks about the swamps of Dagobah with flying pterodactyls. Um, track 34. Luke meets with Yoda. George Lucas talks about the designs for Yoda. The premise of Yoda as a character. Frank Oz talks about the casting origins of Yoda. 
Okay. This is really cool to stop. So side three, you get more commentary stuff when Vader gets his message. Ken Rolson talks about the creating the holograph of the Emperor. Um, track number three, Tom George Lucas talks about the effect of meteors in films. Uh, track four, Ezra Keeve is alive. Ken Rolson talks about the space glug, a sock puppet. Um, track five, the way the Jedi. George Lucas talks about Frank Yaws as Yoda. Track six, Luke and Dagobah tree cave. Ralph McQuarrie talks about concept for Dagobah. Track nine, George Lucas talks about the philosoph philosoph philosophy of do. Side four, have the more audio commentary. You have track number 13, George Lucas talks about the voice of Yoda. Track number 14, Valken, when the Millennium Valken approach, approaches Cloud City. Ken Rawson talks about Cloud City approach and landing. And I rather, I, 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 I like the original Cloud City the way it was in this. I don't need to see the CGI version of it because it sticks out like a sore thumb from all the other effects. I'm pretty sure George Lucas had his way. He just do everything in CGI. So, then you have track 16 where C-3PO takes a wrong turn. Frank Oz talks about the methodical approach to performing Yoda. Track 17 talks about you know, when Luke leaves his unfinished business, Ralph McCurry talks about the futuristic ideas for Cloud City. Side 5, the last commentary track is number 13, the reunion with the fleet. Ken Ralston talks about the really last minute editing, the hospital ship and Armada sequence. Then you have the end credits and some of them to the theatrical trailers on Side 5. Side 6, you get more theatrical trailers. You get sound advice, an interview with Ben Burr, 18 sound design. Um, 17 through 25 is all he's all talking about all the sounds that are associated with the trilogy Ben Burt's talking about all the sounds and stuff I think it's really cool track number 26 is how the walkers walk stop motion workshop footage narrated by Dennis Murin a time lapse presentation of the work to create stop motion shots of the Imperial walkers Academy Award winning special effects supervisor Dennis Murin explains the techniques involved in bringing the walkers to life when this footage is accelerated to 8 to 16 times sp speed on your laser disc player, you can view the walker's movements as they appear in Empire. Number 27, a flight through the asteroids. A storyboard comparison. One of the most complex scenes in the Star Wars trilogy, nearly 100 storyboards detail a scene which includes animation, miniatures, real life, blue screen shots, and matte work. This com com comparison of storyboards and feature film provides an insight into the special effects process that is rarely seen. Track number 28 and 29, there's still photographs, uh, concept art, uh, production concept art, and Yoda concept art. Tracks 31, 30 and 31, there's still photographs behind the scenes of Hoth and Imperial Walkers. 32 to 34, still photographs of the special effects like this Imperial Walker, Spacecraft, and Space Club. And number 35 is Asteroid Flight Storyboard Reprise, which talks about an Asteroid Flight Storyboard represented full screen to enhance details and sketches and instructions for photography. Wow. <laughs> so you get now to Return of the Jedi. Um, more commentary tracks here with track number two, main titles. You have Ren Rylson talks about the challenge and expectation to Jedi. Dennis Mirren also talks about the ambition behind Jedi. Track three, when, when they're approaching the Death Star, Ken Rylson talks about the designs of the Imperial shuttle, the map photography and the opening shuttle flight. Track number 18, Into the Rancor Pit, Dennis Mirren talks about creating the Rancor. Side two, um, you have more commentaries. And, you know, here's some more of the audio commentary tracks. Track number 21, you have on Jabba's sail barge. Ken Ralston talks about creating creatures for Jabba's barge. Uh, 22, track 22, Jabba's end. Ken Ralston talks about photographing and destroying Jabba's barge. Track number 24, Ralph McQuarrie talks about original concepts for the Emperor. And then you have track number four. Which talks about the Endor Task Force on side three. It talks about diverse geographical settings for Jedi, creating effects in varied locations. Five, Dennis Mirren designed the speeder bike chase sequence. So, I mean, I'm just catch my breath for a second here, though. Just doing a real, real quick chat in Skype. Da 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 da.
Okay. So back to this really cool talking more about the special features on this awesome set. We get back to the commentary tracks. You know, side three, chapter you had the whole thing where Dennis Mirren, track three, when they're passing Imperial Security, um, you have side four is Andor Task Force, that's when Dennis Mirren's talking about diverse geographical settings for Jedi, creating effects in weird locate very locations. Track five, the speeder bikes in the forest. Dennis Mirren talks about designing the speeder bike chase sequence. Side four um, track 17, Ken Ralston talks about showcasing the fleet of new Jedi ships. Track number 21, the Rebel fleet is trying when they're trapped. Dennis Mirren talks about considerations and creating effect shots. Um, track number 24, Ken Ralston talks about the multiple layers of detail and effect shots with tennis shoes when the Death Star is fully operational sequence. And 25, the battle takes a coal. Dennis Mirren talks about faster and faster ships with better technology. And side 5, on uh, track number seven, the shield generator and the shield generator is destroyed. Dennis Mirren talks about the destruction of the radar dish. Track number 13, the Death Star reactors, when they're destroyed, Ken Rawson talks about the Death Star attack, more and bigger explosions. And in track 16, Dennis Mirren talks about the enduring popularity of the Star Wars trilogy. And then on side six, you have the supplemental materials, more theatrical trailers, the ABCs of Jedi effects, an interview with Jen Dennis Mirren, which is an insightful look at the creation and development of special effects for a Star Wars trilogy and Return of the Jedi with Academy Award winnings of FX supervisor Dennis Mirren. Track 20, you know, you know, track 20, thoughtful effects, 21 effects by location, 22 is about the Rancor, includes ILM workshop footage on preliminary, preliminary Rancor tests. 20, track number 23, the Endor Forest, includes animatic and ad camera test footage of miniatures for the speeder bite chase through the Endor Forest. Track 24, Jedi Videomatics, a moving storyboard narrated by Ken Ralston. Track number 24 is a post-storyboard rough animation version of the final battle of the Death Star and the Imperial Fleet. This was used by ILM effects groups to evaluate the flow of action. Academy Award winning special effects supervisor Ken Ralston explains the technique of Videomatics. 25, Lap the Neck, the music video from Jabba's Palace. A music video for an extended version of Max Rebo band song performed for Jabba the Hutt. 26, con projection comes concept art, still photographs or concept art of 27th and 30, still photographs behind the scenes of Jabba Palace, of Jabba's Palace, the Rancor, the Dune Sea Battle, Endor Forest. 31 through 33 are still photographs of special effects of the spacecraft, the speeder bike chase, the Death Star. So, that's, that's a lot. That's it really they took their sweet time and, and, and I can't wait to get started on this and listen to the commentary audio commentaries and stuff. So now we're getting now down to I, I thought it was gonna be a quick video, but it turned into a long one. So now I'm gonna show you the discs themselves and then we'll uh we'll be done, but it doesn't have the original poster art, but that that's cool though. Star Wars. Star Wars original trilogy. Um what I really like about these is they took the time and separately to, in order to preserve these films, they put them, every disc is put in its own separate case. You know, they took their, they took a lot of care and effort into this. You can tell. They put it in their own little separate case with the, you know, with the disc jacket or the disc jacket and they also put them all in their own little separate cases. They even have the little hole in the center so you know what you're looking at. So they're all in their separate cases. Which will preserve them for years, years to come. And, you know, so you, you have three discs here. I don't need to take out the other ones. But you get three discs. And uh, three discs are the, the whole films, you know. The laser disc only hurt come with a certain amount of running time on each disc. But I think it's just really cool that they put them in the three they took a lot of time into it. They put them into three separate, you know, and even they even say on the on it says sides one through six. So that's really cool. So they did that. That's Star Wars. And all the other ones look pretty much the same. We have Emperor Strikes Back. Which is three discs again, and there's Empire Strikes Back. It's very simplistic, but I don't mind it. It's kind of cool. Sides seven through twelve, and you have the back, and they're all in the same separate discs. Once again, they're they're in their own separate discs, and they're even in different colors. The little circles on 
on the 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 other ones. On the Empire Strikes Back is blue. The other one's a different color. So you have that. They do different colors there. They color code them. So Empire Strikes Back, in three separate cases. So and, you know they'll be preserved and really nice. And laser discs can last a long time. They 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 can take scratches a lot better than, for example, you know. A lot they can take a pounding better than you know Blu-ray or DVD and then here's Return of the Jedi and this is in three discs also and you have this one's color coded too it's a bit darker blue I think the same color I think it's the same color actually but anyway it doesn't really so they're all in their separate little cases and uh, you know I, I just it's just really cool so yeah Return of the Jedi Original version, not, you know, not chock full of CGI crap. It has the original Ewok song. So, you know, it has all the original stuff. And, you know, the only thing that this awesome set, you know, to make it even better, in my opinion, is just maybe adding the, a laser disc of, you know, the documentary that was aired, you know, on cable uh, from Star Wars to Jedi, the making of the Star Wars trilogy. But other than that, I mean, this is definitely going to go down as one of, if not, it's it. I gotta say it's it's my best laser disc find. You know, I I didn't find it. You know, I paid for it, paid a pretty penny, but it's worth it though. It's a heavy ass box of awesome. So it's a box just chock full of awesomeness. Um, I'm going to watch these sometime soon and review the originals, and uh, also. Um, you're gonna. I'm gonna try to rip them, so you're gonna see those on my blog sometime. But anyway, you know, definitely. If anybody, any of you guys are huge Star Wars fans, this box set is a must-have. If you're big, 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 big Star Wars fans, I'm not even a big, big, big Star Wars fan, but I wanted the original versions in the best possible format. You know that they can be in, and this right here. This what I've showed you is the best possible format right now. And it's not the special edition, it's the original versions. And I just find it really good, really awesome. They put a lot of care and craft into this set. And it's really sad that they could do that back in the day in 1993 with an outdated format in Laserdisc and put all this time and effort into it, but really just shit the bed when it comes to Blu-ray and DVDs of the original versions that everybody knows and loves. Anyway, thanks for sitting through this uh very special video with me and I will check you guys later. See ya.